Hey everyone, let's discuss the most common symptoms of leaky gut. And this actually provides a pretty powerful example of how important your gut health is because when we look at the common symptoms of leaky gut, we see that they're not only digestive, but they also go all the way to systemic symptoms that may impact the brain or your skin or even your metabolism. So let's detail this, giving you a better understanding of what symptoms might be driven by leaky gut. Welcome to Dr. Ruscio Radio, providing practical, science-based insights into health, exploring the importance of nutrition, lifestyle, and gut health through conversations with experts, research reviews, and personal stories. We break through the bias and the noise to bring you simple, trustworthy information that matters. Just in brief here to define leaky gut, there's a few ways of measuring this. I think the best is serum or blood zonulin, or LPS, lipopolysaccharide. Zonulin is a protein that tells you the function of the gate in the intestinal wall that allows things through. And LPS are actual pieces of bacterial fragments that can leak through. So these are the measures, and they're both giving us slightly different windows into measuring the amount of material that passes through the lining, most namely of the small intestine. Now you should have, of course, quite a bit of stuff coming through because you want to absorb calories, vitamins, nutrients, but there is such a thing as too much. And this is when you have excessive leakage or permeability and is leaky gut. From a prevalence perspective, some studies have done a pretty good job of summating how common is leaky gut across the symptoms that we'll discuss here in just a second. The range is kind of broad, but at least it gives us a ballpark. Anywhere from 36 to 88% of, again, these, these symptoms and conditions we'll discuss in a moment, have been associated to leaky gut. So this is maybe the first evidence point showing us that many symptoms can be driven by what's going on in the gut. And depending on how you look at this, it can be a good thing or a bad thing. I think it's actually a good thing because it explains why people have food reactive brain fog, low mood, skin reactions, digestive symptoms. And then you can use it as a starting point for making changes to improve your gut health. And let me just say, there is so much that can be done to improve leaky gut, to improve your gut health. All of this I'm hoping will be interpreted as really empowering information. And and if not, please do so, because as someone who's had many of these issues we'll discuss here in a second, I can tell you they're very, very able to be remedied. Okay, so let's jump in. Oh, and by the way, if you have not yet subscribed, please do so and also comment. That way you'll see future videos from us and I can look at the comments and see what you guys care about and give me ideas for future videos. Okay, now regarding the symptoms, it's helpful to zoom out and think of these in two buckets. One, the obvious, digestive symptoms. Two would be more so systemic or inflammatory. So let's start with the digestive symptoms. Gas, abdominal pain, and bloating as one sort of cluster that often occurs together. And just quoting from a 2023 study, leaky gut syndrome and intestinal barrier dysfunction are associated with intestinal diseases such as inflammatory bowel disease and irritable bowel syndrome. So either IBS or IBD encapsulate altered bowels, constipation, diarrhea, abdominal pain, gas, bloating, discomfort. A good study showing us a correlation between all of these symptoms and leaky gut. And what tends to happen in situations like this is there's this sort of web, this interconnected web, where when there's leaky gut, there's inflammation. Inflammation is unhospitable to healthy bacteria And then you have the formation of imbalances in the bacteria, whether that be dysbiosis or bacterial overgrowth. When this occurs, you can have excessive fermentation. So excuse in the bacteria can lead to the bacteria over fermenting food that causes increased gas, increased pressure and pain, but also the inflammation that accompanies all of this makes someone more sensitive to gas and pressure. So within that, we mentioned briefly constipation and diarrhea. So this would be another one. It has been demonstrated that the inflammation occurring in leaky gut can alter your motility. In fact, a study found that 
there was increased zonulin, so a marker of leaky gut, in those with either IBS constipative type or IBS diarrheal type. So IBS, this abdominal discomfort, gas, and pain, can also occur with constipation or with diarrhea. So it can be labeled as IBS constipative, IBS diarrheal. Both of these were found to correlate with elevated levels of serum zonulin. So we've touched on constipation, diarrhea, gas, bloating, pain, pressure. Along with this, indigestion. This is more so kind of in the upper GI. You eat a meal, you feel prolonged fullness, maybe some reflux, warmth, GERD. And it has also been shown in models of indigestion that these patients have higher levels of small intestinal permeability or leaky gut. So probably not surprising that a number of digestive conditions correlate with leaky gut. This is a really easy one to sort of spot. If you have gut symptoms, you likely have leaky gut. But what about these systemic symptoms? This is where we start to get a better appreciation for the fact that 70% of your immune system actually resides in your small intestine. And because of that, because the immune system polices with inflammation, this is where we start seeing the systemic or broader effects of a leaky gut. So the first would take us all the way up to the brain. And there has been some pretty elegant research looking at the combination or the correlation rather between leaky gut, systemic inflammation, and what's known as sickness behavior. This is where you feel tired and kind of depressed. If you've had the cold or a flu, that feeling of, oh, I just need to hang out on the couch. I, you know, I, I can't think. I don't want to think. I just want to sort of lay around. Well, this sickness behavior when you have a cold is normal. You can also have this, however, when you don't have a cold per se, but you're still having some of the inflammation and immune reactivity due to what's going on in the gut. And this enters a 2022 meta-analysis summarizing 19 studies, and they found that patients with depression had higher levels of zonulin and of LPS. So zonulin is the protein telling you about the gait, so to speak, and LPS is the measurement of particles actually passing through. Important to bear this in mind that some mental health may be a derivative of what's going on in the gut. Now, with this sort of sickness behavior, I mentioned fatigue, and other studies have looked more directly at fatigue. A 2016 study in those with chronic fatigue did find that individuals had higher levels of, again, LPS, marker of leakage, and dysbiosis, an imbalance in the bacteria, than did their healthy controls. So probably not surprising. We're seeing with fatigue and with depression, there's something going on in the gut, namely leaky gut, and this is leading to inflammation, and this inflammation can have a systemic effect. This is a good sort of springboard into another one of the symptoms that tends to accompany this cluster of fatigue and depression, which is also brain fog. So brain fog is, I have a hard time thinking, I have a poor memory, I have a poor recall, I have poor mental endurance. What can happen in brain fog, or one of the mechanisms, is leaky gut, leads to systemic inflammation, and it leads to inflammation in the brain, where specifically, but not limited to, these cells in the brain, immune cells known as microglia, are overactivated. And this is another case where we have some pretty good research. And just a quote here from a 2020 study, we observe a significant increase in serum zonion levels in MCI, mild cognitive impairment, and Alzheimer's disease suggesting that the disruption of intestinal barrier function is a contributing factor to the deterioration of cognitive function. Now, I just want to be careful to say, as someone who had food reactive brain fog due to my gut being a mess many years ago, this is very, very able to be remedied. I want to keep sort of hitting that point that all of this should be used constructively and in an empowering fashion because there's so much that you can do to improve your gut health. Now, along with all this, people may experience joint pain. And there's, you know, again, some pretty good data here showing a correlation between higher levels of zonulin and rheumatoid arthritis. Again, if you're having joint pain, you may even have noticed certain foods perhaps trigger your joint pain. So this would be very demonstrative of there being leaky gut present. 
One study here from, gosh, at this point, maybe seven years ago that, that really sort of opened my eyes to this was looking at rheumatoid arthritis patients. So rheumatoid arthritis is a inflammatory autoimmune condition that causes joint pain. And they took a group of people with this chronic joint pain. Half of them were given a corticosteroid and the other half were given an elemental diet. And they found equivalent results with a steroid, an anti-inflammatory steroid, as compared to an elemental diet. Elemental diets are meal replacements that are formulated to be very, very gut-friendly and easy to absorb. And so what they demonstrated in this study was you can have an equivalent result as this immunosuppressive steroid with an elemental diet because it unburdens the gut from this reactivity. So just you know, tying all these things together and hopefully portraying that there's a lot that you can do to resolve leaky gut and improve your symptoms. Now, as someone who has had poor sleep myself, I wanted to make sure to touch on poor sleep. Now, we don't have research looking directly at measurements of leaky gut and poor sleep, but we do have research looking at IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, and we already discussed the correlation between IBS and leaky gut. So the data here are showing correlations between IBS and poor sleep or insomnia. In fact, a meta-analysis of 36 trials did find that 38% of those with IBS have problems with sleep. Certainly something to think about. Now, there's other obvious things not to overlook regarding your sleep, your pre-bed routine, aka sleep hygiene, and also timing of caffeine making sure you're not consuming caffeine too late in the day, just to name two, but two fairly important factors for sleep. Weight gain. There's some evidence here. I don't know how strong this case is, but at least the research community is starting to show correlations between obesity, weight gain, and what's going on with gut permeability. And to quote a 2021 review paper, disrupted gut permeability, leaky gut syndrome, can represent a predisposing or aggravating condition in obesity. The final point I wanted to make here were for allergic conditions. So this would be food allergy, eczema, or other skin diseases like rosacea. And there's varying levels of evidence connecting these skin conditions and these allergic conditions to leaky gut. Just to quote one paper, zonulin and LPS levels were significantly higher in children with food allergy. Zooming out again, we have a number of digestive symptoms and we have a number of systemic symptoms because what's going on in the gut will cause local symptoms, but due to the fact that 70% of your immune system is in your small intestine and this impacts systemic inflammation, you might also see problems with mood, problems with memory, problems with sleep, problems with, with your joints, skin, maybe even metabolic and certainly allergic and immune. If you want to have a deeper dive on what you can do about leaky gut, please see our video dedicated to the things you can do to improve leaky gut because, again, there are a lot of things that you can do that are natural, well-studied, safe, and effective. And in recap, remember that 36 to 88% of chronic symptoms are correlated to leaky gut. There's a lot that you can do for your leaky gut, so please use this information and interpret this information as empowering. Take stock of your symptoms and use that as an indicator for whether or not you should make some changes to improve your gut health and then hopefully resolve many of these symptoms. Okay, this is Dr. Ruscio. I hope this helps and I'll talk to you next time. 